Hi everyone, it's Lindy on here from Pink Whisper Designs. Today we're showing you this cute little uh, Upon a Star card with the little bunnies looking up at the tree making a wish. So let's get started. We're going to start off with the outside in stitched Christmas tree stackables and we're going to take the largest one from Lawn Fawn and then we're going to take the Bristol Strathmore 100 pound watercolor paper and we're going to run that through the die cut machine. This is the Spellbinders Platinum 6 machine. And I'm actually going to run this through three times. I want three of those trees. So we have those there. Now I'm going to take the uh, puffy cloud borders. And I want this one that has like the medium uh, puffs, I guess would be the right word. And I'm going to put the cut line towards the bottom of the tree. And we're going to be cutting like a scalloped edge along each of the sections of the tree. So you want to line up, so the cut line is facing down, and you want to line that up with those uh, little scallops on the tree there. So I'm just going to find where I want that or what scallops I want, and then I'm going to line it up, you can see there, with the little notches on the tree there. And then I'm just going to tape that in place and run that through my machine. And I'm going to do that again for that second tree a little further down. So you'll see that here in a second. This is going to create a cute little stitched uh, layer. We're, we're going to make a couple layers for the tree. So you'll see here that you get this cute little stitch line around the bottom which matches the stitched border all around the edges. So now we want to do the second layer. So we're going to come down to the second notch on the tree and we're going to do the same thing. I'm just trying to pick out which little scallops I want. And I'm going to tape that in place again and run that through my machine. And once we have this, we have the three pieces we need to build up uh, the layers of our tree. So you'll see that here. And you can see how cute that is. If you want smaller scallops, just use the smaller scallop border. So I'm going to take the Mode Lawn Distress Oxide Ink. I'm going to uh, ink that whole top piece up with that color. Then I'm going to take the next layer. And you can see that I don't need to do color the top part. I just need to color from about halfway down because that's not going to show. And now I wanted to create a little shadow, so I'm taking the Lucky Clover Distress Oxide and I'm applying a little bit of color just part way down there. Then I'm going to go back to the Mowed Lawn and just blend those two together. Now I'm going to grab the forest moss, which is a, a nice dark green, and I'm adding a little bit up there at the top. And I'm going to blend those two together, and I'm kind of like pulling the color down into the other colors. And you can see that gives a nice little shadow there up underneath that layer. So now I'm going to do the same thing here for this lower section. So I'm applying the mode, the mode lawn all over. Then I'm going to go ahead and take the Lucky Clover again, just going part way down. And then I'm going to take the, uh, the blender and blend those two out. And then I'm taking the Forest Moss, adding a little bit of that up there to give some shadow and blending that out as well. I thought it was a little light, so I'm going back in and adding just a little bit more to that to give it a little darker shadow under there. And you can see that gives a lot of life to the tree now. So now I'm going to go ahead and heat set all three of those panels. So now I'm going to take the Lawn Fawn Textured White Embossing Powder. And again, going back to the Mode Lawn ink. And I'm just putting a little of the ink along the bottom scallopy edge. This ink is an embossable ink, so I'm going to sprinkle the embossing powder on and tap away the excess. And then I'm going to do a little bit on the top as well. I want to give it the look of snow, like a snowy look on the trees. And where you see some of that extra powder, just kind of little dots of it, I like that. It looks like maybe how the snow would fall. So don't worry about that. You don't want a straight line. You kind of want to get a little bit of a, a random look to it. And so now on the bottom panel, I just need a little snow around the two corners there because the bottom is not going to show. We're going to cover that. I'm just sprinkling a little bit on each of those corners. 
And now I put away the rest of the embossing powder and we're all set to uh, heat these. So I'm going to take my heat gun and I'm going to go ahead and heat set those. And it gives a beautiful textured snowy look, this embossing powder. I really like it. So the next thing I'm going to do is take the, each of these little layers and I'm going to apply some foam mounting tape to the back of these. And this will give a little bit more dimension to this tree. We created some shadow with the inks, and now we're going to create a little bit more dimension with the layers. So I'm just cutting the photo mounting tape into small little chunks, just because it goes a little bit further this way. And I'm just going to apply all three of these layers together. You'll be able to see here what a beautiful, uh, a lot of depth and uh, dimension you get to this little tree. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a couple of stars for the top of the tree. And these, uh, there are a couple different sizes. We're going to use the Stitch Christmas Tree Frame Star. It's the larger of the two, even though they're very close. So either one would do. I'm going to use this one and I'm going to run it through my little uh, Sizzix Sidekick machine. This is from Tim Holtz and I recently got it and I really love it. It's nice for all these little pieces that you have to do. It only weighs about maybe a pound, a pound and a half. And I really like how it cuts. I haven't had any problems with it cutting anything I've put through it. And it's uh, again convenient when you're just cutting these small little pieces. So I'm going to die cut two of those and I'm going to layer them together just to give the star a little bit of body. It gives it a little bit more substance. So I'm going to go ahead and take the mustard seed ink, the distress oxide, and I'm going to apply that ink all over that little star. So now I'm going to take my Lawn Fawn glue tube and I'm going to go ahead and glue those two stars together. Again, just to give this a little bit more dimension and give it a little more weight. And then I'm going to just set that aside to dry for a second. Now that it's dry, I'm going to go ahead and take my Wink of Stella brush. It's a clear glitter pen. And I'm going to apply clear glitter all over the top of that star. It's just going to give it a beautiful glittery look. Nice and sparkly. So once I have that all set, you can see there how pretty it is. I think you can see that on camera. And um, now I want to go ahead and attach it to the top of that tree. I did decide to apply a little bit of that ink all around the edges, just so when you see it from the side, it'd be just as pretty as from the top. So I'm going to go ahead and take my glue tube again and apply a little bit of ink towards the bottom of the star. and just attach that to my tree. So I'm going to go ahead and let that dry. Now I'm going to take the panel that's going to be the sky. I'm laying the tree on here just to see where I want the light of the star to be. So I'm taking my mustard seed ink again and I'm just going to figure out where that star is and I'm going to make a little circle right there just so I know where the center is and where I, the light source is. So now I'm just going to take that mustard seed ink and just start uh, applying a little bit more in a circular motion just to create that light area. And then I'm going to go ahead and take the picked raspberry. I've been using this a lot for skies. I don't know why, but I keep coming back to it. I know it's an odd choice, but I've really been loving it. It just adds a little bit of a pop of color, and it just kind of makes the sky, these night skies, really work. So now I'm coming back in with the mustard seed, and I'm just going to blend those two together. And I'm going to be doing a lot of blending here. So this is just my initial layer. Now I'm going to take the Chip Sapphire, which is a brand new color, and it's absolutely gorgeous. I just picked this up the other day. And I'm going to apply that all around, right up next to that picked raspberry color. And I'm going to come down towards the bottom of the card with that as well. 
I'm going back now and I'm going to take the, uh, the mustard seed and blend a little bit more. And now the picked raspberry. And I'm blending that out. Again, I'll be blending, I keep kind of going back. What's so great about these Distress Oxide inks is that you can just continue to blend them together. They just beautifully blend. It's so creamy and rich. Um, now I'm applying that chip sapphire down towards the bottom of the card a little bit more. And since it is a night sky, I'm going to be wanting to add a little bit more depth to that sky. But right now I'm just laying the base of it down. Just checking to see that I still like how it looks. And now I'm going to take the black soot, also in the Distress Oxide. And I'm just going to apply that around the edges. I really want to get darken up the whole thing now to give it more of a night sky effect. So I'm just going around both sides and filling that in. And you can see how pretty that looks. A little bit more blending here just to even it out. And I didn't do down the middle because that is going to be covered by the tree. So I'm not worried about that. I'm just trying to focus on what is actually going to show here. So I'm pretty happy with that. So now I'm going to take my perfect pearls in the perfect sparkle color, which is a, more of a white tone. I wanted to create the stars in the sky. So I'm just putting some of this on my glass mat here. And then I'm going to spritz it with the Mini Mister spritzer from Ranger. And I'm going to just spritz that with a little bit of water. And I guess be more careful than I am because when you spray it, the powder just sort of shoots all over the place. And I don't know if you know this about me, but I'm a really messy spatterer. I spatter everything in the room, including myself. But I'm going to spatter this around this card. And you're going to get this beautiful spattered sparkly effect. It's so pretty. And you can kind of see that there on camera. Then I'm going to go ahead and heat set that. I just want to make sure everything's dry so I don't smudge anything. Now I've put some tape on the back of the tree and I put a little photo mounting tape at the top of the star there because I want it to be the same level as the tree. Now I'm going to take some white gesso and now I want to create the snow. So that first spattering was for the stars. Now the snow, I want the snow to be all over on the tree as well. I am going to cover the star though because I just don't want it to get a big glob there now that that's all done. So I'm going to go ahead and spatter that white uh, gesso all over. Now you can use white acrylic paint or the white picket fence paint from Tim Holtz. Whatever you have is fine. I just happen to use the gesso because it's always out on my table. So just uh, spatter that until you feel good about what you see there. So I continued to spatter, making a mess, but I finally got the look that I wanted. And now we've got that all set. So I'm, I'm taking my, uh, my Misty here to do some stamping. And what we're going to do is we're going to stamp these cute little bunnies. And these are from the Upon a Star lawn fawn stamp set. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp these little bunnies. I need uh, two of the larger ones and one of the little one. And I want to make it look like a little family there. So I'm taking my VersaFine Onyx Black ink and I'm going to go ahead and ink those two up. Now you don't need a Misty to do this but you know sometimes if the stamping doesn't come out right you get it you can just you know ink them up again. I, I got a good stamping the first time and then I went and I placed that larger one again and stamped it. So I have two of the large and one of the small. Now I'm taking the coordinating dies to the Upon a Star set and I'm going to go ahead and tape those in place with some uh, purple tape. And then I'm going to go ahead and run these through uh, my little die cut machine. And everything's cut out. So I'm taking my Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers in light gray, mid gray, and light pink. 
And I'm starting with the light gray. And I'm just going to apply that kind of in the shadowy areas where I want it to be a little bit darker. And then I'm coming in with the mid gray. And I'm going to apply also in the darker areas, just not quite as far in. And then I'm going to take my Tim Holtz water brush, the detail tip brush, and I'm going to clean that off first. And then I'm going to start moving that color up. You'll see here I keep going back to the paper towel because I want to remove the excess ink. I didn't want this little bunny to get very dark. So what I'm doing is just moving around some ink and then taking off some of the color. And I continue blending like this. And also if the brush gets too wet, just dab it on your paper towel because sometimes it does get a little bit wet. So just keep a towel handy and you can keep dabbing cleaning off your brush and dabbing it some more. Especially on these small images, I find that I do need a drier brush so that it doesn't start running and pooling up in different areas. So now I'm just gonna go around his ears a little bit there and pull in that color. And these are the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. It's a, like a, a brush tip and they blend beautifully. And now I'm taking the light pink and I'm doing his cheeks and his little nose there. I'm not doing anything with the tail and you'll see why. I'm gonna take, I did stamp off camera three more tails, just the tails, and I cut them out. This is a little bit of a detail work, but I wanted to pop up the little tails. So I'm going to cut a little piece of photo mounting tape for each one of these and place it on there and pop these up. Now this step you could certainly skip. Uh, it's just a little bit of detail I thought would add a little more dimension to the card and make them just a little cuter. Not that they're not already cute enough, but so I'm going to pop on those little tails there. And I think they just look adorable. Now I wanted to give them a little glitter so I'm going back to that Wink of Stella pen and you can see that it had yellow on it still from the star that I colored so I'm cleaning it off and I'm going to apply that glitter all over each of their little tails. And I don't know if you can see that there but it gives them a nice little sparkle. Okay so now I'm going to take my Tim Holtz Tonic Trimmer and I'm going to go ahead and cut it, uh, this piece uh, four and a quarter by about an inch and a half. The four and a quarter is the width of the card. So we're going to make a snowy border. So I'm going to take my stitch hillside borders and just pick whatever one you like. I'm using this one with a, like a slope on it. And this is going to go down at the bottom of our card. So the four and a quarters is how wide the card is. And then I'm going to make the snowy border. I'm just trying to figure out about how high I want that to be. So that looks about right. I'm going to put some uh, purple tape on that. And I'm going to also run that through my little Sizzix Sidekick machine here. And when you do lock this down to the table, it's nice and secure. It doesn't move around at all, I have to say. I've been very pleased with that. So now I've got that piece, and I'm going to take a piece, a nice thick piece of photo mounting tape and place it across the entire bottom here. I just didn't want this to move around at all. So it was hanging over the top of that snowy bank just a little, so I'm cutting a little bit of that excess away. I'm sorry that that's a little bit off camera, but that's all I'm doing there. It's just making sure that it fits. Now I'm going to peel the backing off of that, and I'm just going to place that on the bottom of the card. So now I'm going to take the Distress Oxide Weathered Wood, and this is also from the new color uh, collection. And this is really pretty. It just gives the snow a little bit of a shadow. It's kind of a gray-blue color, which works perfectly for snow. I think this is going to be a go-to ink color here. This is really nice. 
and you get a little bit of a shadow and it also dulls out the edges a little bit so that uh, when you look at it from the side it's not so stark white now i'm just positioning my little bunnies here and i'm going to go ahead and glue those into place i'm going back to my uh lawn fawn glue but you'll see here in a minute that i didn't feel like the bunny was sticking as well as i wanted it to the embossing powder so i did grab my ranger multi matte medium and i put a little dot of that behind his his head here just to make sure that that didn't move around at all and now i'm going to go ahead and apply this little bunny and he needs a little couple little dots of photo mounting tape to make him level with the snowbank that he's standing on. And the same thing for this little guy here, a little bit of mounting tape and then some glue on the bottom. And those three little guys are just so adorable. Okay, so now I did decide to put a little bit of Wink Estella glitter on each of their little noses there. And then I'm taking my white gel pen and I just wanted to have snow around the bunnies. I didn't want to spatter them earlier though because sometimes my spattering just gets too crazy and I get too much ink. So here I have control with the pen. So I'm just kind of adding little dots of white here wherever I think I didn't spatter enough and you could do the whole card this way if you prefer and you have a little bit more control and then I also decided that uh, I would put a little bit like it was falling in front of that star as well so this is just another way of controlling the uh, the look so now I'm going to take my we are memory keepers uh, trim and scoreboard here and I'm going to go ahead and cut my cardstock at four and a quarter. And this is the Bristol Smooth watercolor paper. So it comes on the pad and it is a 12 inch long paper. So this works perfect for what we're going to do here. I'm flipping this tab around so I can make it into the scoreboard. And your little stylus tool is down at the bottom there. And I'm going to score first at five and a half and 11 and you can see that it's a 12 inch piece of paper here so that one inch is going to make a little flap for the inside of the card so i'm going to fold the card in half and that will be a standard a2 size card a top folding card and then i'm going to fold this little flap up here and press that down and then that is going to give us a little flap at the bottom for either money or a gift card or anything else you might want to put in there stickers or something so now I'm going to take my uh, my border die and I'm going to make sure the cut line is up at the top here and I'm going to run that through I'm putting down the purple tape and then I'm going to run that through the die cut machine I did that off camera and you'll see that it creates this cute little stitch snowy border. So I'm going back to my multi-medium uh, matte medium here to apply some glue and use something very sturdy here. Your, your score tape or your red line tape or something that will not move because you are going to be sliding either a gift card or money in there and you don't want it to uh, come apart. So now I'm going to take the star that star there from the stitch star frame so it's the second largest one and I'm going to take the mat from the magic color slider I'm going to take that little banner so I've got those two pieces and I again I'm going to apply some tape just to hold them in place and then I'm going to run those through my die cut machine now I have those ready to go so I'm going back to the Upana star set and I'm going to take the Make a Wish. And I love this set because you can mix, mix and match all the words together and get all different phrases. So I'm just inking it up 
with my black onyx ink and I'm going to stamp that kind of off to the left there because I'm going to be cutting some of that off later. So I'm, I'm setting it in place. I'm just using my acrylic block to stamp that. And now I'm going to take the Holiday Helper stamp set. May you get everything you wish for. And I'm going to take my scissors and cut it in a couple different places here. And I went ahead and put that on my acrylic block. And you'll see here that by cutting these stamps down, you get some really, you can get some really nice effects with your sayings. So I'm going to go ahead first and ink up this star with the mustard seed ink. And I did go ahead and heat set that. I just didn't want, I didn't want it, it gets very saturated when you're applying all these inks. So it's nice to dry them off so you don't get any fingerprints or anything. Now I'm going to take that black onyx, onyx ink again and I'm going to go ahead and stamp that saying. So it's may you get everything you wish for. So I cut the stamp in three sections in order to make that work. Now I'm going back to the weathered wood and I'm just going to apply a little bit around the edges of that banner just to, you know, soften it up a little bit. So that star is going to go on the inside of the card and I want to place it up high enough so that if I am putting a gift card in there, or cash in there, it won't uh, be covered. So just check that, depending on what you're gonna put in your card, just check that you have it in the right position so it doesn't get covered. And then go ahead and glue that down. And I'm just gonna set that aside to dry. Now I did off camera uh, die cut color another bunny. So that would make three large bunnies. I decided I wanted one on the inside of the card here. So I did everything exactly the same as we did before. I'm applying a glue only to the bottom half of him and I'm gonna attach him here. I just thought it'd be so cute if he was looking up at that big star. So I'm going back to that stamp set and I'm gonna take the Merry Christmas from that set. I did decide to use my Misty here because at this point, I didn't want to mess anything up. I just wanted to make sure that it stamped correctly. And uh, I didn't want to risk it. So I put it in here so that if I had to stamp it again, I wouldn't have to worry. It did stamp nicely the first time, so that looks good. So now let's go back to the front of the card. This panel is going to sit right there on the front. I'm taking my Scotch ATG 700 gun, which I use all the time. It's got a nice double stick, permanent double stick tape. And even if you get a little extra there like I did at the top, you just roll your finger across it and push it that push it away. It comes right, it moves right off the paper. So now I've attached that piece. Now I want to take the make a wish and I'm going to apply a little bit of glue to the back of that. And I don't need it all the way to the edge because we're going to cut off a little portion of this here. Just going to make sure it's lined up nice and straight. And I'm going to set that aside to dry for a second or two here. And then I did go ahead and cut off the excess. And it looks really cute. And you can see here the sparkly stars in the background and the snow falling down and these cute little bunnies and all the dimension. And then when you flip the card open, you have this may you get everything you wish for and the little bunny looking up at the star and it says Merry Christmas and this little pocket here for either your gift card or tuck some money in there. So I hope you had fun today. I sure had fun making this little card and if you did please hit the like button and subscribe and don't forget to visit me at pinkwhisperdesigns.com. Thanks so much and have a great day. Bye bye.